So the next topic is your geometric representation of the signals. Okay, it is the first topic from your second module. So these are some of the university questions which are asked repeatedly. Fourth question A part explain the geometric representation of signals and express energy of the signal in terms of signal vector which is asked for 8 marks from August September 2020. Second question is explain the geometric representation of set of M energy signals as linear combination of N orthogonal basis functions. Illustrate for the case n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 3 with neat diagrams and expressions. It is also asked for 8 marks from Jan 2019. Explain the geometric representation of the signal. Show that the energy of the signal is equal to the square length of the vector representing it which is asked again for 8 marks from June July 2018. Show that the energy of the signal is equal to the squared length of the signal vector which is asked for 8 marks. It is again uh, as in January 2020. Okay, so these question two questions are same. So the answer for all these questions will be provided by today's video. Okay, so geometric representation of the signal is generally nothing but which gives a compact characterization of the signal along with simple analysis, right? So it can be, uh, it, it is defined as representing any set of M energy signal that is let us consider the energy signal as a psi of t as a linear combination of N orthonormal basis functions where N is less than or equal to M. So we require an orthonormal basis function which is represented as phi. Okay. So here uh, the condition here is the set of uh, N orthonormal uh, basis function N should be less than or equal to the message signal that, uh, that we are transmitting. So let us first consider that consider M possible real valued energy signal that is nothing but your transmitted signal. So M possible uh, signals right. So SI of T will be equal to S1 of T comma S2 of T etc up till SM of T and they are represented in terms of N orthonormal basis function as so your signal message signal SI of T can be represented in terms of orthonormal basis function as SI of T is equal to summation J is equal to 1 to N S I J into phi J of T where now uh, your S i j the coefficient will be uh, represented as 0 to T S i of T into phi J of T into D T. So here i is equal to 1 comma 2 etc up till m and what will be your j? j will be equal to 1 comma 2 etc up till n right. So as mentioned above the coefficient will be S i j will be of the expansion are defined by 0 to T. So 0 to T S i of T into phi J of T into D T. Now the real valued basis function, so uh, your basis function phi 1 of t comma phi 2 of t etc up till phi n of t form an orthonormal set. What is meant by orthonormal uh, set? Orthonormal set means uh, the meaning is that 0 to t phi 1 of t into phi j of t into dt is equal to del ij which is equal to the value is 1 if your i is equal to j and it is 0 if i is not equal to j. Uh, del ij is called as Kronecker delta okay so these are the three important formulas which you have so your uh, signal message signal si of t is equal to summation j is equal to 1 sij into phi j of t where your coefficient will be represented as sij is equal to 0 to t si of t into phi j of t into dt and your uh, orthonormal basis function uh, forms a orthonormal set means what if i is equal to j you will be having the value as 1 and if i not equal to j it will be equal to 0. So you have illustrating the geometric representation of the signals uh, uh, let us illustrate with an example okay now n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 3. So n is equal to 2 means what 5 1 of t uh, 5 1 and 5 2 right and m is equal to 3 means s1 uh, s2 and s3. So you will be having three message signal s1 of t s2 of t and s3 of t. So these three message vectors that is S1, S2 and, S, and S3 can be represented on phi 2 and phi 1 plane. It is also called a signal space or Euclidean space means it is represented in two dimensional space. Okay. So let n be the number of orthonormal function where n is equal to 2 right. Example n is equal to 2 and m is equal to what? What is m? m is your message signal which is equal to 3. So in the before we have seen SI of T is equal to summation J is equal to 1 SIJ into phi J of T 
where i is equal to 1 2 3 because your m is equal to 3 in this case right so si of t is equal to what will be your um, n now n is equal to 2 so j is equal to 1 to 2 sij into phi j of t so can we substitute the value now si of t is equal to what will be your value s i 1 right j is for first condition j is equal to 1 what will be the value s i 1 into phi 1 of t plus when j is equal to 2 s i 2 into phi 2 of t now let us apply the next uh, condition when i is equal to what is the value for i i is equal to 1 2 and 3 right so when i is equal to 1 what will be the value for s uh, 1 of t s 1 of t i is equal to 1 so s i of t instead of i you are substituting the value is equal to 1 s 1 of t is equal to i is equal to 1 right so s 1 1 into 5 1 of t and s 1 2 into 5 2 of t when i is equal to 2 s 2 of t will be equal to s 2 1 into you are going to substitute so if i can take this as uh, equation a substitute in equation a you will be getting this value Okay, S2 of t will be equal to S21 into 5 1 of t plus S22 into 5 2 of t. I is equal to 3. What will be the value? S3 of t is equal to S31 into 5 1 of t plus S32 into 5 2 of t. Where S1 of t and S2 of t and S3 of t are expressed in terms of 5 1 of t and 5 2 of t, right? So the message signals are expressed in terms of your orthonormal basis function. So in this example, let us take the coordinates one example, let us take, okay? So this uh, uh, coordinates S11, S12 is taken as 3,1 and S21, S22 is taken as 1,3 and S31 and S32 is taken as 2, comma, minus 2. So how can we write it then? S1 will be equal to S11 is 3, right? So 351 plus 1. So 1 into 52, you will be getting 52. So S1 is equal to 351 plus 1. 5 2 similarly for coefficient 1 and 3 we will be getting s2 is equal to 5 1 plus 3 5 2 and 2 comma minus 2 you will be getting s3 is equal to 2 5 1 minus 2 5 2 now so you are going to represent in your in your euclidean space so this is also called by another name it is also called as your constellation uh, diagram okay diagram so your uh, orthonormal basis function 5 1 and 5 2 now what are your vectors s1 s2 and s3 right s1 what will be your s1 s1 will be equal to 3 5 1 plus 3 5 2 so let us take the coordinates what are the coordinates 3 comma 1 so s1 will be equal to 3 5 1 and 5 2 1 into 5 2 so this will be your coordinate similarly what is your s2 s2 is equal to 1 comma 1 comma 3 1 uh, that is 5 1 plus 3 5 2 and s3 is equal to 2 5 1 that is 2 5 1 and minus 2 5 2 so these will be the three coordinates which you have got this is the represent geometric representation of the signal for n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 3 so therefore for prescribed i the set of coefficients s i j where j is equal to 1 to n can be viewed as an n dimensional signal vector okay so now you can represent this by means of two diagrams one is your synthesizer and the other one is your analyzer so synthesizer means your input side right and this is your output side so what will be your input to the synthesizer it is nothing but your coefficient si1 si2 etc up till sin and uh, your output is going to be your signal si of t so if you want to get the output si of t this is obtained by your equation one okay Equation 1. What was your equation 1? Si of t is equal to summation j is equal to n sij into uh, phi j of t. So you can input will be your the two signal will be that is your si1, si2 etc. up till sin will be given to a multiplier to which the other input is uh, input will be your orthonormal basis function right phi 1 of t phi 2 of t etc up till phi 1 of t which will be given to the summer and you will be getting your signal si of t that is how you are getting your equation 1 uh, it is nothing but your synthesizer or your transmitter so uh, here you have n elements of si which is given from equation 1 and n multipliers okay so uh, in the second you have your reconstruction analyzer for reconstructing the signal vector si so if you want to reconstruct your uh, signal vector that is si1 si2 etc up till sin then you are going for your second equation so what will be your second equation I think sij is equal to coefficient sij is equal to 0 to t si of t into phi j of t into dt right so that will be your second equation so 0 to t s i of t from the signal 
and your orthonormal basis function. So what will be your signal? Uh, SI of t input is going to be your signal SI of t and it is given to your multiplier uh, to which the other input is going to be your phi 1 of t, phi 2 of t etc up till phi n, n of t and, and applying it to your integrator you will be getting your uh, coefficients SI1, etc, uh, SI2 etc up till SI n of t. So this is also called by another name it is also called as correlator right product integrator or correlator it is also called, called as correlator or your coherent receiver or correlation receiver okay and the last expression is here your relationship between your energy content of the signal and its work vector representation right so a question was asked uh, to prove that energy is equal to a square of your signal vision so you are going to prove that energy is equal to a square of the signal vector okay so for that you have to begin with the energy of the signal SI of t of duration t second is energy is given by EI is equal to 0 to t SI square of t into dt where i is equal to what will be the value 1 comma 2 comma etc up till m which is nothing but your message signal. So let me take this as equation 4. You already know what is the value for SI right. So what was your SI? SI of t is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n SIJ into phi j of t which is expressed in terms of the, the geometrical representation right so if i substitute this equation 1 in equation 4 what you will be getting e i will be equal to 0 to t s i square of t so you are going to take first um, value as j and the second as k okay so summation j is equal to 1 to n s i j into phi j of t and the and the second coefficient will be equal to summation k is equal to 1 to n s i k into phi k of t into dt. Now interchanging the order of summation and integration and rearranging because it is both this linear operation what you will be getting you are going to separate it okay. So summation j is equal to 1 to n summation k is equal to 1 to n s i j into s i k into 0 to t phi j of t into phi k of t. Now what will be this value? It is a orthonormal basis function, right? So what will be the value? Your uh, phi j of t forms an orthonormal set. What is the orthonormal set which we have seen in equation 3? 1 if j is equal to k and 0 if j not equal to k. So what will be your value of your ei? ei will be equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n. You will be having this value as 1, right? So you will be getting I is sorry j is equal to k so what will be the value s i j square which is equal to uh, s i 1 square plus j is equal to 1 to n till n right so s i 1 square plus s i 2 square plus etc up till s i n square so I can write that energy of the signal s i of t is equal to the square length of the signal vector s i of t. So this will be your uh, different uh, expressions for the different questions asked for your university exam.